one of the most essential topics to gain a full understanding of how networks work is client server and peer to peer. In order to understand this, we need to look at all of the different keywords individually first. So a client is any digital device. Now I say that because this can mean a tablet, it could mean a mobile phone, and it could mean a PC or a laptop or any sort of device that connects to the network. So as a client, we need to connect that client to a server in order to receive certain bits of information. So a server is a supercomputer that responds to these requests from a client. So essentially you are the client and you are, every time you're requesting something from the server, that server will respond. There are different types of servers that we can have. A lot of the time, your main proper piece of hardware server could be split into what we call virtual servers. Now, in this particular case, we're going to just look at email servers, web servers, and print servers. Servers can store user profiles, passwords, and access information as well. So therefore, you are sometimes sending a request just to even log into your computer. So the actual client server relationship is when any digital device is connected up to a server. A client connects to a network to request things like data from a server or maybe even just to log in. The server processes the request and then responds. Multiple devices can connect to one server. So this is how most local area networks are formed. Most of the internet works on a client server relationship. It's really important to understand this relationship properly. So even just by looking at the diagram shown here, you can see a server with multiple devices connected, including a printer. Now with this setup, that means that all three of those computers could all access that one printer by going through the server, sending a request to the server to print something. So there are some key advantages of having your network set up with a client server base. Main advantages are, it's much easier to keep track of files. So if all your files are saved on a network, each client can then access and share those files. It's much easier to take backups of all the shared data. You can just back up the data that's stored on your server rather than trying to back up hundreds of devices individually. It's much easier to install software. We can push software out to the server, which can then install it onto each individual client. It's much easier to manage security of files. We can have what you call user permissions where certain users aren't allowed to access certain areas of the server. It's also much more reliable because it's always turned on. So if you ever need to access something in particular, you can just send a request to the server and be able to access it. There are some downsides to having a client server relationship. So the disadvantages are that they're really expensive to set up and maintain. Servers can cost thousands and thousands of pounds. And if anything happens to it, it can cost a lot of money to replace or to repair. It's also a single point of failure. So in other words, if the, fa if the server ever goes down and all your data and emails and user accounts are all saved on the server, then your whole network is gonna fail. The server can often become overloaded so if you have too many clients or too many requests at one time, it can sometimes start to freeze or slow down. Client-server relationship means that the server is going to need some sort of specialist IT personnel to look after and maintain this server. They can often cost a lot of money to employ, or if it's an external company to look after it, it costs an awful lot of money. So the alternative of client-server relationship is what we call a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. Now this gets its name from the fact that your peers are all have the same sort of level of access. They're all supposedly at the same level, hence they are your peers. So peer-to-peer -peer relationship is all devices connected together without a server. So the network is formed by connecting devices together. All your files will be stored on the individual device. There is no server involved, so there's no central place where they're all going to. This can be useful for, for sharing files because all devices have got equal rights 
and you could all send requests to multiple different devices to, to download the same file. This would mean that your file is downloaded from multiple different places. You could use a peer-to-peer -peer relationship at home for connecting devices or sharing a printer. The obvious advantage of a peer-to-peer -peer relationship is it's much cheaper to set up. We don't need any particularly expensive hardware to set up this network. It's much, much easier to maintain. And it's also not dependent on a single machine. So if one machine happened to basically become faulty or need repair, the other computers can still function on the network. The main disadvantages of a peer-to-peer -peer network is that all the users are going to need to manage their own backups. You're going to all have to back up your own data. The other disadvantage is that the machines are going to slow down when others access it. So if you want to download a file and you're downloading it from a different computer, the other computer is going to slow down a lot when you're using it. This type of network is also far less secure because you've got a lot of computers all connected to each other. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. Please press like and subscribe. Thank you.